when systems seize up, when power is, is taken by a cabal, when it no longer works, when everything within that society, you know, even if it has the veneer of democracy, is used to funnel wealth and power upwards into the hands of this totally unaccountable, rapacious, oligarchic elite, uh, then eventually people revolt against the system itself. But it's the, it's the system of corporate power, which Sheldon Wollen calls inverted totalitarianism, and that is not going to get better. Uh, unless we make war against the system. Uh, and, and, and that just, you know, this whole idea that voting makes any real difference so that we don't even have the vocabulary uh, to speak about class warfare. Eventually I realized that what it was really about was global finance aiming to turn everything around us um, in my city of deep poverty into data for the purposes of digital surveillance and profit. And it is only a stage, it's not real. None of that's real. The mainstream media isn't real. It's not real. It's not real. They're feeding us a nightmare pill and it's fake. It's fake. We're being fed a nightmare pill and it's fake. It's not real, kids. If you remember it's not real, it's powerless. If you buy into its reality, then it eats you. It's not real. It's fake. Our discernment has been damaged deliberately, so we buy into this shit. It's infantilizing. We're not adults. We're not sensible, calm adults. We're identified with form. Eckhart Tolle said the root past the trauma is to cease to identify with the world of form. Don't be stuck in ego. Don't be stuck in the material world. Get past it. This health crisis is the very apparatus to start rolling out the fourth industrial revolution technology, such as health and immunization passports. And as recognized long ago by Huxley, it will not be forced upon us. Rather, we will cheer for it, and we will demand it. Although I'm certain Huxley could never have imagined in his wildest dreams to what extent this pathology would materialize. This is National Socialism on an epic scale. And it, the way they're already dishing this out to the people here, it appears that we're going to be getting a final solution as well, which was issued during uh, the National Socialism of Nazi Germany, sending us all in a downward spiral here into this new National Socialist thing that has just been thrown upon us here. And the Federal Reserve is moving as quickly as they can. Look at what they're doing. Right now, while the dollar remains exceedingly strong, they are flooding the world with as much debt as they possibly can, all by design, giving dollars to central banks around the world. I don't think a single one of us, not even me, realized how rapid this would happen. This was incredible. This has been a setup of truly beyond belief proportions. The release of this virus, the cratering of crude oil, the the plunging of the U.S. markets only to set up the Federal Reserve being the lender and buyer of last resort, giving the government, okay, this new America government, all the funds they need to nationalize everything. You're really describing in great detail almost two economies. There's literally an economy with certain rules for the wealthy and for corporations and these the CARES Acts and the CARES Act and the uh, Federal Reserve initiatives of the last couple of weeks really add tools to this economy for the rich and for corporations. And it's really an economy which you cannot lose. Like you can mess up, you can do badly, you can yeah. not be profitable, but if you're big enough, you cannot lose. You're, you're just yeah. gonna get rich and richer. Whereas um, th with the CARES Act and especially the small business loans, only 5% of small businesses have been able to get them. 95% so far haven't. There are all kinds of hurdles that you've identified to even getting those loans. And 50% and, and so, and of small businesses have closed their doors. Maybe they'll open, maybe they won't. But people are suffering. So that is the picture you painted. 
we have an existential crisis in small business formation, um, which will have a very negative impact on our economy and economic growth um, in the years to come. If we don't address this right now, I'm, I'm sorry to say we have many other crises too, but I don't think you can ignore this one. Absolutely, um, and as a as a political commentator, I can't help noticing that the the way America will look on the other side of policies like this is more and more people are basically going to be wage slaves rather than yeah. that American dream of the little mom and pop shop on Main Street, you know, the being able to send your have your kid do better than yourself, you know, being able to provide employment to your friends and neighbors. That that is not what the future looks like with 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 these kinds of problems. There have been a number of studies that have come out already um, showing that people who are uh, working class, poor, and in and, and poverty uh, are by far and away uh, the most at risk when it comes to this particular situation. But I'm not talking about that. Um, I'm talking about how we are being treated, how we are being conditioned, how we are being um, programmed to go along with the program. Um, and we are being, this is primarily coming from a certain class uh, in the strata that is our system. Like I look at Facebook where my, I have, you know, friends from high school and stuff and like um, everything, the people who are really committed to this story have put, filled, have um, just slipped it into an episode of the Trump show. For them, it's all, about, it's a story of Trump's failure and that's why it's exciting and all they they don't care about that they don't want to read you know when sweden puts up the data from the hospitals they don't want to look at that all they want to see is how trump is reacting to whatever the new piece of information is whatever the new event is that the whole thing is just it's the it's they love the virus headline because they think it it is going to be part of their war on trump for their exposure of Trump. And there's no other interest in it at all. It's like a, the, the narrative that is being um, layered over this story, the narrative explanation of why everybody's under house arrest, it's, it's like a kitsch storytelling. It's, it's, it's like a children's story almost. It barely rises yeah. to the level of, of um, cheap science fiction. It's not even. The American dream is a myth. It's a lie. In an editorial dated July 13th, 2007, the New York Times described the rapidly deteriorating situation this way. Mobility between generations, people doing better or worse than their parents, is weaker in America than in Denmark, Austria, Norway, Finland, Canada, Sweden, Germany, Spain, and France. If it takes longer, that means the normal product that's in that supply chain cannot make it. And that's what we're seeing today. Normal shipments in the United States, loads of onions. Normal US consumption is 350 loads a day. Um, we saw sub 200 shipments, 200 loads per day, every single day last week. And the most recent number that I've seen is 127. One third of the normal US consumption of onions is being shipped. That's the shift in the supply chain. That's why you're seeing milk being dumped, tomatoes being dumped squash in Florida being dumped, flowers being ruined and, and wasted. There are other countries that if you had a pre-existing condition, and let's say the virus caused you to go to the ICU and then have a heart or kidney problem, some countries are recording that as 
a heart issue or a kidney issue and not a COVID-19 death. Um, right now we're still recording it and we'll, I mean, the great thing about having forms that come in and a form that has the ability to mark it as COVID-19 infection, the intent is right now that those, if someone dies with COVID-19, we are counting that. But if all of them had survived, she'd have eight children. Mm. And what the developing world does not need is more children. Mm. And I think that was the biggest aha to Bill and me when we got into this work, is we asked ourselves, of course, the same hard-nosed question you'd ask, which is, if you get into this work and you start to save these children, will women just keep overpopulating the world? Mm.